A couple of weeks ago, I was in the middle of filming a line and wash tutorial. I had transferred my pencil sketch onto my watercolor sheet. I did all of my line work using my drawing pen. The ink was dry, everything was ready to go for the watercolor washes, and surprise, surprise, when I get started painting the sky, I noticed that the paper had gone bad. Immediately, I get this sinking feeling in my stomach. I knew that I would have to do everything all over again. So watercolor paper is different from other kinds of papers because it is made to handle water-soluble mediums and heavy soaking. For this to happen, manufacturers have to add sizing to this paper. Sizing is a substance that is made from either animal, plant, or synthetic sources, and it is added to the paper pulp as the sheets are being made, or after the sheets have been made and dried, or sometimes both. Meaning, sometimes it's added internally into that pulp, sometimes it's added externally, and sometimes it's added in both ways. This sizing allows watercolor to perform as it should as we're painting. It allows watercolor to do its thing. Sizing has a huge impact on how watercolor paper performs in these three key areas. Firstly, there is the paper's absorbency. So how fast or how slowly the paper absorbs that paint and that water that have been placed on it. When paper has a good sizing, it also allows that paint and that water to more evenly disperse on that surface and absorb more evenly. When paper sizing has gone bad, you're often going to see a lot of splotchiness and patchiness and lines and marks. Sometimes, because the sizing in certain sections of that sheet has gone bad and not in others, you're going to find that after painting those washes, some sections are still wet and workable and other sections have completely dried, which leads to a lot of splotchiness. Because when you place paint on paper that has gone bad, it immediately sinks right into those paper fibers. The second way that paper sizing can greatly impact watercolors performance is in terms of color. When a paper has a good sizing to it, it's going to allow those colors to really sparkle and look vibrant and lively. When the sizing has gone bad, those colors are going to appear dull and very flat. The third way that paper sizing has a huge impact on watercolor paper's performance is it provides it its strength. It protects it from wear and abrasion. Not only this, but it also helps prevent the paper from buckling and warping too much as you're painting because it provides it a certain amount of stiffness. Of course, if you're using thinner or lightweight paper, then that is going to easily warp and buckle no matter what. I like using paper that is mid-weight to heavy weight. So at least 140 pounds in thickness is what I like using and I almost never have to stretch my watercolor paper with the techniques and um, how I like doing things but I know that some watercolor artists do enjoy stretching their paper. This is totally up to you. It is important for you to know though, if you are into stretching your watercolor paper, that you can remove some of that sizing on that surface of the paper, especially as you're doing your stretching, if you're not very careful. Just as an FYI as well, because I often receive this question, Yes, both sides of watercolor sheets are sized. So you could paint on both sides if you wanted to. I often buy sheets of watercolor paper that have a slightly different texture front and back. And sometimes when I'm gonna be bringing in a drawing medium like colored pencils or a drawing pen, I choose the side of the sheet that is less textured and when I'm only going to be using watercolor and brushes, I use the side that is more textured. Without good sizing, paper is going to immediately absorb that paint and that water that you place on it, and that paint immediately sinks into those paper fibers. It dries immediately. So if you're using good watercolor paper and you feel that watercolor dries too quickly, this is even quicker. You see it like right away starting to dry and right away sinking into those fibers. And this is a huge issue when we're painting with this medium because 
When we're painting with watercolor, we want to apply that paint on the surface and have it stay on that surface wet for a little bit longer so that we can continue working and creating whatever effects we want to create whether it's picking up that bead where we just left off to continue filling in that area with that watercolor wash or add a little bit more color onto that initial layer to darken areas or create soft gradients or blooms or even to pick up some of that color, do some lifting and that kind of technique to remove paint from certain areas that we're looking to lighten. For all of that to happen, the paint has to be wet. So now that I've explained what paper sizing is and why it's so important, I'm going to move on to providing a list of points that are going to help you know and realize when that paper sizing has gone bad. And I'm also going to be providing tips that will help you keep your watercolor paper in better conditions for a longer time and what you can do with those watercolor sheets if you notice that they have gone bad. So if you're a little bit more experienced and you've been painting with quality watercolor paper for a good amount of time, you'll likely know that the paper has gone bad straight away when you place that paint on it. But if you're just getting started, here are a few points that you can take with you so that you can tell more easily and more quickly before moving forward and putting more effort into something and then just getting super frustrated because things are not looking like you want them to look and blaming yourself, your lack of technique, when it's actually the paper. The first one is, as I've been mentioning, the paint immediately sinks into that paper. Sometimes so much so that it soaks right through to the back. So you turn the paper over and you see that splotch of water or paint in the back. Another way to tell is that your color is looking super dull and pale and flat. Another way to tell is you're simply unable to create those beautiful wet on wet effects that are so particular to watercolor. Sometimes as well you're going to notice like a mottled look, little white dots or specks throughout that area that you have have just applied your color on and you're also going to notice some amount of patchiness because usually paper sizing doesn't go bad all at once throughout the entire sheet but it goes bad in certain areas before going bad in others and usually it happens from the outside in meaning the outer edges of your paper usually go bad quicker because they are more in contact with the outside environment you'll likely also notice a lot of texture lines and marks and edges drying on you even if you're already at a point in your journey at which you're able to paint quickly because the paint is drying so, so fast. You'll likely also notice some amount of fuzziness and blurriness along those edges of your shapes which are drying very quickly. Here are some practical tips that I want to share with you that will help you as you're choosing the paper that you're going to be buying that are also going to help you keep your watercolor paper in better conditions for a longer time. And I also want to share what I like doing with my watercolor paper once it's gone bad in order to use it and not throw it away. First and foremost, it's important to know that quality watercolor paper, so more expensive paper, is likely to have better sizing. Student grade watercolor paper usually doesn't have very good sizing. It's one of the reasons why you can't really create very nice wet on wet effects usually when it comes to student grade paper, aside from the fact that it's not 100% cotton. But just know that you kind of get what you pay for. I've never had sizing go bad when it comes to paper from Arches, for example example, which is higher quality and more expensive. This said, I always have both student grade, a cheaper paper in my studio, and higher quality paper because I'm always doing explorations and color swatches and quick color studies, stuff like that. And I don't want to be using my higher quality expensive paper for all of that. And honestly, in the beginning of my journey, I used a lot of student grade paper and I was able to work around the weaknesses that student grade watercolor paper has and still manage to create great results and increase my skills. So I have nothing against student grade paper, just know what you are in for. Another tip for you is avoid buying too much watercolor paper at once, even if it's on sale and stuff like that. If you're not going to be using it soonish, I wouldn't buy it. So the way that I do it is 
I buy small amounts of watercolor paper at a time, a couple of pads at most. If I don't feel that I'm going to be using it in one to three months time, I avoid buying that. I avoid sales as well because many times that watercolor paper is on sale because it's been sitting on those shelves in that art supply store for a while. And that's another thing. Sizing goes bad over time. So there's a greater chance that older paper is going to have less than stellar sizing. You never know what conditions that paper has been stored in, how it's been cared for, how it's been shipped to you even. So don't buy too much paper at once and use it when you have it. I also try to buy watercolor paper pads and blocks that I know are sealed in plastic. Another tip for you is if you're into large watercolor pieces and you need to buy large single sheets of watercolor paper, I would go buy them in person at an art supply store and if possible, make sure that you're taking a sheet from a package that has been freshly opened. Once I have that watercolor paper in my studio, I do my best to keep it away from humidity and moisture. And if you live in extreme conditions, I would recommend keeping your watercolor paper in an airtight container. And finally, what can you do with that watercolor paper once you find out that the sizing has gone bad? Don't throw it away. Please don't throw it away. If it's hot press watercolor paper, which is the smoothest type of paper out there, you can use it for drawing. And if it's cold pressed or rough paper, you can use it for painting with gouache or other opaque painting mediums. The last thing that I want to say is you do not have to worry about sizing going bad in paintings that you've already finished. It's not going to affect those finished paintings. I just wanted to make sure to share that because that's another question that I've received. All right, and that is going to do it for today's video. I really hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down below in the comment section. Thank you so very much for watching. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy your art practice and see you very soon.